Okay. So I'm going to talk about the work on motion parallax for 360 uh, degrees RGBD video. Um, so reproducing real world recorded content in VR is a very challenging task. And I would like to start explaining why with these two videos. So this one playing now on the left is a short cinematic video called Miyubi from Felix and Paul Studios. And this is a 360 video recorded with a fixed camera. And what you're seeing here is the experience of a given user watching the video and looking around. And this one playing on the right is a gameplay of a popular VR game called Super Hot VR. And this VR experience has a key element that the previous video did not have. This one supports head motion parallax. So you can notice that the point of view of the game changes as the user moves around, while in the previous video, the user could only watch the scene from a given viewpoint where only rotation was possible. So the recorded 360 video on the left can create sort of a feeling of immersion because it fills the viewer's field of view. However, it is not responsive to translational shifts of the user. This experience is unnatural and can cause discomfort and even nausea in some users due to the mismatch between the visual and vestibular systems. In recorded experiences, its frame is captured from a given camera position, and in contrast to CG content, we do not have any information about how the scene will look from any other camera position. The, pro the problem comes, comes when the user tries to move uh, their heads. What do we show them? How can we render a scene from a different point of view which was never captured? So in this work, we introduce a new approach that deals with these problems and supports six degrees of freedom for 360 video. So before going into detail, I want to show you so, uh, one of our results. As you can see, this video has been recorded from a single fixed camera position, and this is the only input that the system receives. Now let's pause the video, and here you can see the same frame reproduced from different points of view which were never recorded. Our method relies on depth image-based rendering for displaying novel views and allows to render the video in real time from different viewpoints according to the user's head movement. So there has been some previous works on image-based rendering dealing with similar problems. These works differ mainly in the characteristics of the input data or in the type of scene representation used. But in general, they can be classified on methods either uh, using explicit, uh, sorry, implicit geometry or methods relying on explicit geometry such as depth maps or other geometry proxies. Our work is framed in the second category, but our input differs substantially from what these uh, works typically use as an input. First, our system uh, starting point is just an RGB panorama and its depth, which has a very narrow baseline compared to the inputs of these previous works. And second, we generate novel and scene viewpoints from its frame captured from a single fixed camera position, while usually existing works rely on interpolating between a set of already existing uh, viewpoints. Uh, so these two works here are probably the closest to ours. Uh, recently, uh, recently, Henman and Koff presented a novel approach for capturing 3D panoramas by taking several pictures with a phone camera. Uh, then, uh, Overbeck et al. proposed a light field capture setup which uses several GoPros uh, places in a rotating array, uh, as you can see here. And both these works produce high-fidelity 3D scenes that can be reproduced from slightly different viewpoints. However, they are not suitable for dynamic scenarios or video because the acquisition process takes some time. In contrast, we use as an input to our approach a 360 video captured from a single fixed viewpoint. Our system is independent of a specific hardware, camera setup, of recorded baseline, so we can potentially work with any commercially available 360 camera, even if the capture baseline is very narrow. However, one of the implications of working with narrower baselines is the degradation on the quality of the estimated depth maps, which are crucial for depth image-based rendering systems. Here you can see a couple of depth maps with uh, estimated with different algorithms from a scene captured uh, with different cameras. In both cases, the estimated depth maps present many artifacts, especially near uh, these occlusion boundaries, so producing new plausible views based on this is not a trivial task. In this work, we present an approach that enables head motion parallax with only an RGBD 360 video as input. 
Even from this limited input, we can render novel views from different camera positions with satisfactory results as shown in the example you see here. In order to do this, our approach has two key contributions. On one hand, we propose a layer video representation to smoothly handle these occlusions. And on the other, we also propose an optimization algorithm for depth uh, improvement tailored to our particular problem. I will now be going into detail about these two components. So let's talk first about the layer video representation. Our layer representation is based, based on uh, depth image-based rendering. For a given video and its corresponding depth, we can reproject it into a 3D space where the color will be given by the RGB panorama and this distance to the center of projection will be given by its depth. Then, when a new camera position needs to be rendered, the mesh is projected into, the, uh, into this, the image plane of this new virtual point of view. And here you can see how a naive mesh-based depth reprojection would, like, would look like for uh, a frame of one of our videos. As you can see in the close-up, the mesh triangles that would correspond to these occlusions around the head become stretched, producing a very unpleasant result. In order to successfully deal with these disocclusions, we need to first identify which triangles uh, will become these occlusion boundaries and then fill them with information on what's behind them. In order to do this, we need to introduce more complexity in our system. So our approach uses a video representation based on three layers. The foreground layer is just the original video with, uh, with its corresponding depth map. Then, when a new point uh, of view needs to be rendered, we need additional information to fill the disocclusions. For this purpose, we have two additional layers. For uh, this first extrapolated layer, we leverage the temporal information of the video. So whenever there is an item moving, such as uh, the person in this example, we can actually extract the information of what's behind from the recorded frames. This layer is static and essentially contains a version of the uh, RGB and depth of the scene without, uh, with the moving objects removed. Then the last layer is the painted layer, and it contains regions in areas behind static objects that can become visible due to these occlusions. We obtain this layer by identifying which regions can become disoccluded and in painting them. Finally, uh, an opacity map is used to control the transparency of the layers at runtime. The idea is that as the viewer's head moves from the center of projection and these occlusions occur in certain areas, the foreground layer fades in those areas to allow visibility of the back layers. You can find more information about how to compute these layers and the opacity map uh, in the main paper. Now let's talk about the depth improvement optimization. So now we already uh, have a video layer representation that can support head motion parallax. However, if you recall from some slides ago, uh, we still need to deal with depth maps that contain harmful artifacts that will heavily influence the final results, such as the, this depth map here. So we have designed an optimization algorithm tailored to our purposes. We have identified three main sources of artifacts, bleeding artifacts around object boundaries, discontinuities in what should be smooth gradients, and strong discontinuities in what should be a continuous surface. We focus on minimizing these problems to make the scene look more visually plausible and appealing. In our optimization problem, we are looking for a new depth map that satisfies our, our constraints. Sorry. First, the data term, term ensures fidelity to the input depth values. Then, to enforce clean edges, we have a, an edge guidance term that penalizes propagation across edges. There is also a smoothness term that acts over local neighbors. And additionally, this, terms in, uh, this term includes a smoothness weight component based on depth local variance. So that smoothness is only imposed in regions where there are no uh, abrupt changes in depth. Finally, we have a temporal consistency term to avoid uh, temporal depth flickering. Uh, so we choose the weight of each term empirically, and an evaluation of this, together with more details about each term, can be found uh, in the main paper. So let's see some results. This is the video display from its recorder, uh, as recorded from a fix fixed camera position. And now, for this given frame, all these new camera positions were never recorded. These are all uh, complete novel views. So for example, if you pay attention uh, behind the, the man which, uh, which, is, which is in the front, you will see uh, the piano and the lamp and the other man behind, which uh, get occluded or disoccluded as the camera moves around. Uh, 
And here you can see a comparison of a naive reprojection uh, or layer representation with the original depth and the final system with both layer representation and depth improvement. So as we already saw before, uh, the naive reprojection cannot handle these occlusions at all, and the raw depth contains artifacts that heavily influence the final result. This is especially harmful near these occlusion boundaries, for example, in this case, for the disocclusion genera generated between the head and the lamp, where only your final solution is able to generate an appealing result. And here you can see for one of the frames in the previous video the different layers in action when moving the camera around. We show in orange the original footage and green and purple show areas which, uh, where these occlusions occur, so our generated layers are visible. Additionally, we have also tested our method for the case of capture systems that do not yield uh, depth maps. And this is particularly important because monocular 360 cameras are more affordable uh, than sophisticated camera rigs. So here you can see an example extracted from a, from a data set of a previous work that did not provide depth maps. For this case, we have used an, uh, the approach proposed by Godard et al. to estimate per frame depth maps from monocular RGB. However, as you can see in the image, uh, the estimated depth is not of sufficient quality for our purposes, and it also lacks temporal co uh, consistency. So our depth improvement stage signif significantly increases the quality of the final depth, including temporal coherence and an an enable enabling motion parallax even from a, such a limited input. So finally, to validate if the results achieved with our methods uh, also provide an advantages over convolutional VR video viewing, we performed three different user studies using 360 videos uh, with and without added motion parallax. So we designed two experiments for assessing pre preference, one for assessing sickness. So for the first preference experiments, users did not know the purpose of the test, and they were asked to freely watch the videos without further instructions um, and tell us about their preferences. In this case, our videos uh, with added parallax were preferred six out of the seven cases. Uh, for the second preference experiment, the goal was to test if once the presence of motion parallax is explicitly known, users would find it uh, more appealing or not. And in this case, our method was strongly preferred for six, uh, sorry, five out of the six videos. And finally, for the sickness experiment, uh, 17 out of the 24 participants reported symptoms of sickness while watching the videos without motion parallax, and only four, five experienced these symptoms with our method. So as conclusions, we have presented a technique to enable head motion parallax in real world, capture, uh, real world capture 360 video. Our approach is independent of a specific hardware or camera setup. It requires only RGBD 360 videos as input. It can deal with different data sources, including 360 monocular video, and our user studies confirm that the, uh, our method provides a more compelling viewing experience. Uh, this is the these are the main limitations of uh, our system. We assume that the camera is static. Uh, however, this assumption uh, we think is reasonable uh, since a considerable amount of 360 content is shot with static cameras. Um, also, our layer representation features three layers, and in theory, more could be uh, needed depending on the scene complexity, and like analysis of the optimal number of layers could be future work. And also, our method relies on the quality of the input depth map. Um, so our method still introduces some artifacts at the seclusion boundaries. Uh, so getting rid completely of this remains an open challenge for future research. And lastly, I would like to show you the project webpage. Here you can find uh, more results. You can find a demo uh, that you can try in the Oculus headset. And soon you will also find uh, code so you can try uh, your own videos. Thanks. Thank you, Anna. We have time for one question, maybe, and if the next uh, speaker could start to set up. Hi, um, Greg from Paris, France. Um, I have a question about the depth representation. I imagine each layer is a number of triangles uh, based on, on the number of pixels in the image. Um, is that a problem at any point for FPS? Like if we have a very high resolution image, is that too much triangles for um, GPU or CPU to handle? Yeah, if, if you have, sorry, if you have like a really high resolution, um, it will be a problem for, for uh, FPS. So right now we are supporting uh, 1,028 by 2,024. 
Um, so the system is not fully optimized, so it could support more potentially. But yeah, of course, if uh, the resolution is really high, the real time will, will suffer a bit, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's thank the speaker again.